Welcome back to Wookiees on X-Wing. My name is Matt. And I'm John. And today we've got our first game of round five of the uh, Atlantic Canadian Regionals uh, Swiss rounds for the X-Wing tournament. Uh, hosted by John and co-run by myself and run out of metagames. Well, so uh, who do we got playing today, John? So we have two players, obviously two players. One is Jason Saint-Ange, and he is playing what, Matt? Well, Jason Saint-Ange, he is playing a... Selfish Darth Vader, that is Darth with veteran instincts, an engine upgrade, the TIE X1 title, and advanced Harding computer. He's got three Academy pilots as wingmen, and then the Emperor's uh, personal shuttle, an Omnicron group pilot with, uh, well, nothing else he can fit in there. That's 100 points even. Very nice. I like the fact that Emperor Palpatine has Vader as his own personal little escort there, and then a bunch of TIEs for good measure. I'm a big fan of TIEs. And Craig Tucker... Also a fan of Ties, he is flying two Academy pilots with Wampa and Commander Kentrick in the VT-49 Decimator. And if you don't remember what he does, he, his pilot ability is, if you have no shields and at least one damage card assigned to you, increase your agility value by one. He is equipped with the Predator EPT, Anti-Pursuit Lasers Modification, Emperor Palpatine as well, and Izan Izard. I can never pronounce her name properly. But her ability is kind of neat, especially on Commander Kankirk. Her ability is, at the start of the combat phase, if you have no shields and at least one damage card assigned to your ship, you may perform a free evade action. So as soon as you get those shields down and you put some damage on to this ship, it gets, a, it gets some kind of agility dice. And on top of that, it also gets an evade token. So it becomes super dodgy as for a dump truck. Yeah, as we've seen, uh, we've seen Craig on the show before, and that decimator becomes surprisingly difficult to actually hit once you've damaged it. I I was a fan then. I'm a fan of it now. I but I'm excited to see two uh, mini swarms facing off against each other. We'll see who will be the victor in this round. Now, a lot of you audience members have uh, told us how much you've <laughs> sort of disliked seeing these. The, the prevalence of the Jumpmaster 5000, whether it be Dengaru or the Torpedo Boat, so I'm really happy to be able to show off a match with two classic Imperial players. Not even It's not even pal bases. It's just, it's a bunch of TIE Fighters. You have Vader in there as well, and you got Emperor Palpatine flying in however he wants to fly, whether he's flying in style in the Decimator or on his per personal <laughs> He's in shuttle. economy class. On the yeah, <laughs> exactly. So here we have some setups. Very classic rock deployment. A lot of big rocks right in the middle of the map there. Yeah, but it looks like both of these players are adept at flying around those rocks, but they've also leave, left themselves enough space for them to fly in formation around them too. Mm -hmm. Then you have, well, you have Wampa with his academy pilots on the right side, and you have the three academy pilots on the left side. Where's Vader going to go? I would think uh, top of the board, really. He does not want to get close to Wampa. He doesn't have to worry too much about the academy pilots. Uh, he still doesn't like three attack dice from the Decimator, especially with Predator. That can be somewhat aggravating. But the real danger to Vader here is going to be Wampa to be able to just completely bypass his agility and his shields. And especially with, uh, with Emperor Palpatine being present, you can basically guarantee that damage is going to go through. Oh, yes. And it won't take that long before those, those damages make complete short work of vader absolutely and here we have so it looks like uh looks like craig has decided i don't like vader i'm going to try to uh either head him off or at very least get the rocks between myself and uh and jason's academy swarm here well with a, a couple of aca academy pilots such as the ones that craig has they're going to be very di it's going to be very difficult for them to pin down vader but they can easily block off some escape routes with their beautiful barrel roll action. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if they even get one bump off on Vader, that's two actions gone rather than the usual one just because of Darth Vader's pilot ability. And then on top of that, you have the beautiful turret being able to pew-pew Vader down should he lose his actions. And no auto thrusters to worry about in this matchup, so you don't really care about where that turret's facing. Yeah, Vader, Vader especially on the TIE X1, <laughs> is a very classic all the way, very old school, all the way from wave two of the game, but he, he's he gotten better over the years. With Absolutely. That, with that advanced targeting computer, he is a menace for sure. 
yeah, the advanced targeting computer and the uh, the addition of the title, it's it is so so versatile. All right, and we have so Wampa again turning up, continuing uh, Craig's kind of run towards Vader here. Have to get him out of the way for the moment to see where uh, if the decimator is going to end up clearing that that scrum at all. Doesn't look like it. No, I think he's going to be backtracking, but it does angle him a little bit depending on how he does backtrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's all right. I mean, the commander, he doesn't really have to worry too much. Well, this early in the yet. game, there's nothing that he can really do for actions. He has the focus or target lock, and neither of them are going to be coming into <laughs> the game this no, not on yet. this turn. Not at all. And it's a nice, it actually does angle him a little better to, you know, let the decimator run through the middle of that asteroid field if he really wants to. Mm -hmm. Try to play chicken with uh, with Jason's academy swarm here. And well, and to be completely honest, that would be a very good tactic if he's able to just pick off one of these TIE fighters a turn, mm -hmm. bumping into them, making them lose their actions, but because they're all stuck onto each other, it's very likely that even if they bump... He, he's still going to be able to get a shot off on them. And with Predator, four attack dice going in, maybe even a focus, depending on what happens with his actions, it's it's pretty pretty hardcore. Absolutely. So we here we have Vader doing his thing. He's he does his... not want to get any closer than he has to. No, barrel rolling. <clears throat> so yeah. here, here comes the, the screaming ties coming around the bend. Yeah, Craig very definitely going for Vader. And it's a good choice. You want to get Vader's uh, threat out of the game as quickly as possible while you still have all of your guns in play. He's, while the TIE advanced, it, it's not, you know, he's not the Inquisitor, he's not Sun Fell. He's still, he packs a heck of a wall up, especially with that, uh, the title and the advanced targeting computer. Well, he's a lot more flexible in some regards than either Sun Fell or the mm. Inquisitor because he has that built-in push the limit and he doesn't have to worry about getting stressed in order to do it. Absolutely. So he has a lot of flexibility. He doesn't have the sheer maneuver dial that, say, the Inquisitor or Suntir Fell has. Mm -hmm. But Vader does have barrel roll and evade, uh, and obviously the engine upgrade that he's paid points for, making him an incredibly slippery target. And on top of that, he's a lot more durable than either of those two fighters. He is. You combine that with Emperor Palpatine watching his back, you... It's his, his apprentice. He gotta, he's got to take care of his, his his boy. And here we are. So it looks like Palpatine has decided. Uh, you know what? I'm. I may decide to play a bit more active role in this game rather than just cruising along the board edge. Which hey, it's you know the shuttle. It's it's got three attack dice. If you can safely commit that in, and start putting those guns to use, hey, all the more power to you. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with using three a three attack dice blast. Absolutely not. And there's Wampa. He's sticking with his uh, his academy escorts there. And let's see where the commander's going. I am curious. Ah, okay. I think he's going to stay with his escorts. Yeah, so the commander, he is not going to use the decimator as a speed bump, it doesn't look like. And that's kind of smart. He wants to play a little bit cagey. He wants to get that defensive ability, but he doesn't want to get it that fast. No. Because if he does, I mean, he's already getting to the point where he's almost giving up half of his points mm -hmm. to his opponent. Absolutely. And it's good. It, it lets you, you know, concentrating your force in one spot, almost always a good idea, especially when your target happens to be Darth Vader. It makes I think it's making Jason think about where he wants to what he wants to do with Vader, mm -hmm. where he wants to go, and how he wants to play the future turns. With the Academy pilots, the way that they're positioned, it's gonna be kind of difficult to get them engaged without some just speculative shots. Yeah, and there so check the target lock just out of firing just out of lock range there. And that's a real pity, because with Vader you really want to get the early access with that target lock mm -hmm. just hey here's your target lock I'm, I'm not really caring about firing at you this turn but next turn is where it's where it's going to get real next turn i will be focused and evaded or you know well focus and or evade at least one of those will be happening yeah but here we go so we got to craig's academy's turning in yeah very nice early bank allowed him to have a wide vantage 
and really just play to his strength, which mm -hmm. is using the maneuverability of the TIE fighter, but also spreading out because you have that wide, wide footprint with multiple TIEs. Yeah. And let's see where Jason's... Unsurprisingly, they are banking or turning into that, uh, that asteroid gap. Looks like we are going to have one heck of a dogfight starting this turn. I'm really intrigued to see how this is going to go. Probably quite like the, the opening to the Battle of Endor, where all of the fighters are screaming past each other. <laughs> Laser blasts going everywhere, with, yeah. Yeah, with the, uh, the finger on the trigger and the throttle to the metal. Absolutely. And that's quite a nice channel for, uh, for Jason to run through here. It, it does keep his flank secure from the Decimator, but it also potentially will limit, uh, limit his maneuverability here. He has to be very careful... Uh, how he flies through this uh, this narrow slot and almost landing on that asteroid. Yes, that, that was... was very daring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Craig definitely is going to have to be thinking about what he's going to be doing as well, mm -hmm. because as you said, the channel has been blocked off, making it very difficult to not bump with these other TIE fighters. And if he does bump, he's going to be losing actions. And as we know, an actionless TIE is a dead TIE. But, uh, Jason, he does have... An advantage in one respect because he he does not have initiative his academies will be moving after craig's mm -hmm. so craig's academies won't be in potential landing spots for jason's ties to end up which it can be a little odd to you know ha say not having the initiative is an advantage but in this case it, it definitely can turn out to be yeah seeing where your opponent's going can make the difference and we've got the commander turning in again no actions would have been nice for him to uh, be able to action this turn, but he does have Predator. He does have Palpatine if he needs it. Not the biggest loss. Yeah. I think unless Vader gets out of Dodge really quickly here, Wampa is going to be using Emperor Palpatine's Oh, prop. yes. And because of where Wampa is, unfortunately, he's actually the, the tie that Ken Kirk bumped into. He's not in a very good spot to pin down Vader. And Jason, seeing the opening, will very easily avoid Wampa's firing arc here. And it looks like he will actually completely clear all of the Ty's fire arcs. He, it looks like he's trying to go for that, that's for sure. Yeah. He's he got to be careful, though, because he doesn't want to do too many evasive actions without getting some tokens there. Mm -hmm. We definitely <laughs> want to have some kind of defensive tech to, in order to deal with the three, potentially four attack dice coming your way. Uh, it looks like he has decided to uh, just go fully offensive into the Decimator. Just give in to his hatred. I yeah. love it. And here we have Vader, pilot skill 11 that he is. Not really any points spending uh, spending Palpatine yet. Just put a couple points of damage through onto the Decimator. Blow a couple shields off. And we saw that beautiful trigger from the advanced targeting computer. Mm -hmm. Just giving the free crit. Now it obviously doesn't do very much with when, it, when there's shields involved. But hey, a free point of damage is still a free point of damage. Especially against a zero evasions uh, ship. Yeah. And so there we have Predator triggering. Only one potential, unfortunately. And Vader very narrowly evading that. <laughs> that, that could have been embarrassing. That would have been, that would have been <laughs> hilarious, losing a shield to specul a speculative shot like that. Yeah. And so Wampa looks like he's going to take a shot at an academy. And let's see, so we get we do get to see the evasion roll. And nothing going through there. Very, uh, very finely checking, or very delicately checking uh, the Omnicron pilot's range here, see if he is in range for a shot. It appears he is. So there's Jason's, uh, Pope Mobile taking a shot at an academy, and looks like has, has to spend, spend a token. A token. <laughs> has to spend a token, but yes. So no damage, almost damage, but not quite. It looks like both of these players were intending to use their Palpatines defensively rather than offensively. Mm -hmm. so here we have some return shots. One, One. potential. Ooh, is he going to use Palp or he has no, a token? That's a focus. And again, both players very, uh, very closely skirting the edge here with, uh, with really, uh, really quite bad evasion rolls. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 
Unfortunately, uh, Craig's other academy missing his shot. So we'll have Jason's returning fi returning the uh, favor. Looks like he will elect to... Well, he should uh, end up firing at Wampa, given mm -hmm. the chance. Well, I wouldn't blame him. Wampa <laughs> is probably the, not the scariest thing, but the most detrimental to Jason's squadron. Just able to completely negate the defensive abilities that these TIE Fighters and even the TIE Advance mm -hmm. have by having defense dice. Yeah, but there was one evasion roll, so he's actually just continuing to focus on the Decimator. It looks like he wants to pile as much damage into onto that as quickly as he can. That well, makes sense to me. It's free points. It's like a pinata of points. <laughs> the more you hit it, the more points you get. Absolutely. And there is the first point of hull damage, and we should have one final academy opening up onto it. That will likely be through an asteroid. Let's see if it is range 3. Oh, it looks like that's range 2. And spend the focus. Ah, no, it was range 3. So range 3 through an asteroid. Rogue dice coming in. And spending Palpatine finally to mitigate one of those hits. And we actually get a crit through. So pretty early on. That, uh, that decimator is starting to be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, no kidding. He's, well, he's now down to half health. Uh, half hull, I should say. All right. Very, uh, a very good turn for, for Jason there. Yeah. Lots of damage put through. Yeah, not only that, like you said, uh, you get a crit in, but that also means that, well, the commander... <laughs> His defensive tech is going to be triggering. Mm -hmm. Provided he is not stressed, he's going to be getting Izan's free fo free evade token. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, he's going to be getting an extra agility dice, making him a fairly, <laughs> like I said, a fairly defensive decimator. Yeah. The anti-pursuit lasers, in this case, well, they may come up. It's definitely, uh, I don't know if they'll actually come into effect this turn. But we will have to see. It really depends on how he wants to play it. Mm -hmm. If he wants to use the decimator as a, a, a choke point, as it were. Yeah. And so Craig using a... Setting up his, uh, his academies here to... Well, basically prevent any kind of left, uh, left turns by by Jason's fleet here. Yeah, it is a bit of a risky maneuver because mm -hmm. well, Wampa and Wampa and uh, Commander Ken Kirk, they go after these academy pilots. So if they go into a blocking maneuver, if if they move directly forward, then they're in a, a really tricky spot, mm -hmm. especially with Vader being where he is. Yeah, and we saw a Craig, one of Craig's uh, academies actually did a 4K turn there. Get himself turned around get some, hopefully get some really, uh, really good quality ambush shots onto, onto Jason's academies as they try to navigate uh, Craig's ties. So here we have the TIE Fighter moving up forward, trying to figure out where he wants to go, if he wants to do a barrel roll, if he wants to just go evasive. I would probably take just an evade token because he's up, up in the front. Mm. Yep, and Jason playing a very similar gr game to to Craig here. He wants to just gum up that uh, gum up that channel between the asteroids. It's a very risky move too with how he placed those because Craig could have easily blocked him, mm -hmm. and that could have made his life living hell. Yeah, absolutely. But it looks like one of Jason's academies will have a very nice. Uh, We'll have a nice side shot into the the academy pilot that did not K-turn. It looks like he may clip the one of the corners of his base. Mm. We have a bump there, but that bump actually puts the the tie that did impact in a very nice spot to get the drop on Craig's tie that K-turned. And here we have the shuttle just pulling on the emergency brake. Just, <laughs> it doesn't just want to get any closer. There. No, I think it's good, but at the same time, it's able to get those nice mm -hmm. fire, the nice firepower from its three attack dice. And there we have the situation that Craig did not want, 
Wampa running into uh, into Jace, Jason's academy that moved the furthest forward. Got the commander just blasting past the scrum there. And he's in a very good spot. That actually. is that is a nice position. I am very surprised that he was able to actually land that. That could have gone really badly, depending on how he moved his own TIE Fighters. Mm -hmm. And he repairs his crit for his action. Just getting rid of that. There, well, there should be a four dice Predator shot coming out at someone. I would not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I think a tie, there, one of Jason's academies should have a bad day here very shortly. Yeah, I, and if I was Craig, I would be going after the one that has no action. Mm -hmm. Because on top of you know, having four attack dice at range one and predator. Predator is getting is even better. <laughs> two re rolls. Fi here. Exactly. Because you're firing at a pilot skill one fighter, two of your dice get re rolled instead of one. Yeah. And if need be, all the commander has to do is get two points of damage through and then Wampa can seal the deal. Oh yes. It'd be a it, lot of effort to kill one fighter, but at the same time, that's a fighter that can jump one of yours without repercussion. And then on top of that, you all don't have to really worry about anything when you have Palpatine at, at the wheel. Absolutely. And so there we have uh, Vader pulling a K-turn. So no actions for him. Interesting. But uh, still getting the advanced targeting computer. And we have the one agility, the now one agility decimator with uh, Izan's evade token. Mm-hmm. Deciding if he wanted to Palpatine or not. And it looks like Craig will opt to use Palpatine early on to keep as much damage off of the commander as he can. I don't blame him. Not at all, no. That's a big chunk of cash mm -hmm. flying about and getting ripped apart by TIE Fighters. And here we have... So there's the four attack dice. Predator triggering... Two hits so far. Looks like all four have the potential to damage. Let's see what happens. And that, unless we've got a Palpatine. So there is Jason opting to use Palpatine to save his TIE Fighter. Take a hit and a crit. Does not look like a direct hit, though. That would uh, that would actually kill it. Yeah, no kidding. That is a minor hull breach. All right. So not ideal. Let's see if Wampa can seal can finish the job here. Now he has to natively roll a crit. Does not get it. Gets a hit instead. But three focus. <laughs> Three focus results says he dies anyway. Yeah, not the result you want to get. <laughs> not at all. And that would be first blood. Our first TIE fighter has been removed from the match. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good way to start for Jason, I don't think. No, that uh, that TIE was in a very advantageous spot uh, to to fire at Craig's K-turn to TIE fighter. Mm-hmm. And that leaves that TIE fighter just open to, uh, not to be annoying, really. Keep to stay alive, get some shots downrange into Vader just in case. Yeah, well, J Jason's MVP really is Vader, and everything else is fluff because <laughs> Vader can take care of himself. Mm -hmm. But it's important to have these TIE fighters and even this shuttle be a, a nice distraction. And a den damage engine on the commander. E. That is not good. So that was actually a range three shot from the shuttle. Really? It rolled a focus and a blank. So. Unable to mitigate either damage, and that uh, that decimator becomes even less maneuverable. Seems like the uh, the fake or <laughs> true Emperor Palpatine, whichever is not the clone, uh, is not really helping uh, Craig out that much. Not so much. And here we have so Craig's academies are now uh, now trading shots. We have a damage sensor array going out, and a second crit, a console fire. <laughs> that ship's burning up. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I think that tie is gonna be scrapped when if it gets back to base. <laughs> yeah, that or it needs a repaint. 
Absolutely. That was the, uh, that was Jason's tie that, well, ended up blocking Wampa. Mm. So not, uh, not no. a happy fighter. Well, d d dangerous prospect, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, other ties, just the continuing uh, trading shots of Academy versus Academy. I'm always a big fan of seeing TIE Fighters actually land hits. Mm-hmm. Well, Makes that was them a the, little bit better than Stormtroopers. That was the uh, ta Academy facing us, taking a shot into the shuttle. And we should have the K turned. Ah, oh, so we have off to Jason here. Having his range one Academies now. And again, just continuing to pour fire onto the Decimator. It's a good idea. You want to bring that thing down as quickly as possible. And a direct hit. There's a crit oh. you want to see. Well, not if you're Craig. <laughs> not if you're Craig, no. Good crit for Jason. Not good for Craig. And I think he's really close to completely being destroyed on that thing. Well, he's, yeah, he's uh, got a lot of damage on there. And it looks like at least one more is going to be going through. Oh, two. He is, yep. Yeah. I think seven or eight points of damage onto the hull for that now. Only a couple more left. Should uh, should take one more round, but it's still in the commander. He's if Jason can get can continue to keep his remaining ships on the decimator, he stands a decent chance of killing it this round. Well, but he I doesn't want to lose anymore. All I think all Jason has to do really is just crash into him or crash ahead of him mm. and hope that the decimator just lands on top of him but it's very difficult to do from the angle that he's at well, uh, especially if you're you know potentially rock rocking the rocks mm -hmm. and again that asteroid very narrowly being avoided getting a front row seat to this uh this dog fight as yeah. craig whizzes past it too close for comfort and we've got Craig's K-Turned Academy. He is not going to be able to... Well, he'll be able to clear the commander, but he is not... Uh, he's actually running into Wampa and then backtracking all the way back to that position. <sighs> meaning, meaning that the commander, should he so choose, has a clear shot. Absolutely. All right. And now we've got Jason's academies moving in, or moving around, I guess. Get Wampa out of the way here. It, Jason, it looks like he may, it may be uh, wisely opting for the uh, better part of Valor. <laughs> and uh, hey, disengaging—it's what we constantly talk about. Exactly. I'm sure you guys have heard me say it a hundred times by now. Especially since that. Uh, that TIE Fighter's the one down to one health. He doesn't want to be hanging around. Yeah, if if the nuts and bolts of my TIE Fighter start come, coming loose and racketing in the cockpit, I'm pretty sure I want to get out, out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And puts out, his, uh, puts out his console fire. That's something you don't want to be burning while on one health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other academy, and we actually uh, should see anti-pursuit lasers triggering here. That is and definitely a bump. Very dangerous, especially with Emperor That's Palpatine. A hit. Oh, it, it doesn't even need to use Emperor Palpatine. No, gets a free hit, one point of damage on a clean <laughs> Tie Fighter. Luckily, it's the clean Tie Fighter and not the almost destroyed Tie Fighter. That. That but would be terribly embarrassing to lose a TIE fighter to a bump. The sad thing is is that there isn't that much of a difference in order to get from one <laughs> to the other. Not not so much, no. Got a wing up here. And Omnicron maneuvering into, well, right into the crosshairs of, uh, of Craig's Academy pilot. Dangerous place to be. At least the Omnicron does have most of his health remaining. We have some zoom zoom from a TIE fighter. We got Wampa. Yep, this is Wampa moving up. And actually, that looks like a three... A 3K turn there. Gets him into a nice spot to... Well, 
gets hopefully get some shots into Vader and put his uh his pilot ability to use there. Yeah, very flexible flying on both of these pilots. Absolutely. Well, it's what you'd come to expect from... We are in the top tables in round five. Yeah, these so. people, th <laughs> these players have fought tooth and nail and lightsaber in order to get up to here, and it shows they're flying incredibly technically well. Not, the, if there are bumps, it's almost on purpose, or it's a preemptive, is this is the best possible place for me to bump. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a bloody fight right now. Absolutely. I haven't seen TIE Fighters take on a Decimator quite like this in some time. Yeah, and so we've got... Vader is... He is also uh, just... He's, well, slow playing as much as a TIE can. Yeah. At least with the advance, he does have access to one bank maneuvers. Oh, yes. So gets himself in a nice spot there to you know, take his pick of shots wherever he wants, really. And you know what the best part about that those one bank maneuvers are? They're green. Absolutely. Gets rid of his K-turn stress. <laughs> He has two actions that he can use this turn, Ugh. probably defensively, but uh, let's well, see where he goes. He still has that target lock of, on on one of his targets. So. Mm -hmm. He's still got uh, still got the commander, and it looks like he's actually so we've got a boost for one of them, possibly to get Vader into range two of the decimator. Mm. It is the other thing that's quite possible is that he. Vader, being a very aggressive pilot, might figure, hey, if I can just put this thing down, then I don't have to worry about it shooting back at me. If I can put it in the dirt. Yeah, exactly. Offense is the best defense. Exactly. If you can remove Palpatine as quickly as possible, then, hey, you don't have to worry about getting Wampa. And there's well, his end. Not nearly as much, anyway. Not as much, no. There's his end going out, so... A nicely defensive commander here. <coughs> Vader continuing his assault, his relentless assault onto that decimator. He's had, uh, he's had that thing's number from the beginning of the game. He knows his target. Yes, very much akin to a mighty juggernaut, <laughs> unstoppable in every way. So, a quick range check here to see if it's range two or range three. And a. Uh, a two defense dice evaded decimator is a very strange sentence to say. <laughs> it can dodge. <laughs> a ship like that could shouldn't be able to dodge. <laughs> so some uh, technical magic later. Have a range check, and let's have Vader open fire. He wants to get as many hits as possible here. Should have the. Uh, Advanced targeting come out. Let's see if Jason opts to spend Palpatine on uh, on the attack dice this early, or if he's going to use them to to try to keep Vader alive. So there is a focus spent, and that is Palpatine going to be used, and, and Craig using his in turn to mitigate damage. But that is, at very least, one crit going through. A stunned pilot. <laughs> oh. All right, that's a little dangerous with that decimator being around those debris. But, uh... Yeah, the last thing you want is for your decimator to run into a rock and then explode. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, equally dangerous is running into one of these TIE fighters. Mm -hmm. He has managed to clear the... Uh, the cluster there, which is which is nice. Yeah. Well, really only has to worry about running into an asteroid at this point. But with that decimator, it's all of its hard turns now being red. Mm -hmm. It's not terribly maneuverable anymore. <laughs> or even less so than it was before. I'm not going to blame it. No. No. And there we had... And, and Craig, actually, he had to spend both Palpatine and his evade token on uh, Vader's shot. Was able to mitigate down to one damage, but still a lot of resources. And shots back. Very nice defense roll. And, yep, so... Very, uh... It, it is the, the best decision, uh, Craig taking to try to put that one health tie in his grave. He does confirm the kill, 
and we now have two kills to none for Craig. But if the commander can go down, Jason's going to be in a, a lot better spot. Yeah, at the moment, it looks like Craig is just dominating. But as you know, it, the battle can go either way. Absolutely. And that was Wampa. Not, uh, not doing a whole lot, unfortunately. You got Craig's uh, <clears throat> two academy pilots. Again, trying to get some work done here. Two potentials, and oh, that was a terribly unfortunate <laughs> defense roll. And oh, two. Craig getting two academies in one turn. Jeez. That is not where he wants to be. <laughs> no. So Jason now has no academy pilots left. All three have been killed. <laughs> oh. And expecting uh, expecting Vader to be able to mop this up by himself, that's a bit much. But it is, know, a, it is a tall order. But when you have a little bit of support from the Lambda and Emperor Palpatine, mm -hmm. nothing's impossible. No, and at least thankfully enough, uh, Jason's last academy was killed by another academy pilot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, based you know by the rules, it's still technically on the table. Does get to return fire, puts two damage into or three damage, sorry, into the decimator there. Yeah, that decimator is not looking good at all. No, sir, it is not. have some maneuvering vader getting into the optimal position some defense dice rolled all right and so there's academies oh sorry no looks like he was shooting at academy versus academy so oh, major hall breach <laughs> <laughs> the crits of this game just keep on coming and they're all brutal absolutely that one's one you want to see on the decimator though yeah And this is an academy shooting into the Omnicron. It's like a little bit of an order oops there, but that's all right. Proxy up the Omnicron here for Craig's academies to maneuver through. Mm -hmm. Looks like they are opting to turn around it. Well, lots of room to maneuver. Looks like Jason has is fairly intimate with these rocks but at, but still keeping his distance yeah and he actually he does not or craig does not want to get his own academies too close to the commander because if the commander bumps his own ships that's still a point of damage yeah <clears throat> that would uh i would think the emperor would not be terribly impressed at that point all right some more maneuver dancing Yep, looks like that. Uh, we have another academy swinging around to try to well, head off where the shuttle can potentially go here. Just hara keep harassing uh, Jason's Emperor. Be real and well, be as annoying as possible, really. <laughs> and the Emperor saying, let's go, floor it. I'm sick of these goons. I am your boss. <laughs> you will drive me as fast as I want to go. Yeah. I'm I'm sick of these goons. Let's uh, let's go. And he looks like that shuttle is actually going to fetch up on that. Actually, may fetch up on Wampa, which uh, would be advantageous to the shuttle, given that he will be able to fire, potentially fire at uh, Craig's academy, in, at the initiative step above. Yeah, that shuttle is in a fairly interesting spot and in a good one for the purposes of the long game mm -hmm. the shuttle for the most part has been maneuvering and taking its time and getting to this spot but for all intents and purposes that that shuttle is there for one reason and one reason reason only and that is to act as the chauffeur for emperor palpatine yeah but that is going to be a four attack dice shot into uh one of craig's academies here and uh well let's see if he we'll end up seeing if he can survive it yeah and here we've got wampa needing to shed his stress from his k-turn previously doing a nice bank maneuver over his uh his academy wingman 
landing just behind him. Yeah, that, uh, if he bumped there, that, that would have been bad. That would have been an instantaneous switch fire on the wall. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but it does get him in a nice spot. He won't, he's not going to have to worry about Vader. He may have to worry about, uh, the Emperor, actually. If the Emperor's still in range one, he's still a better target than that Academy. Oh, you think? Oh, well, if you can kill him, but... Uh, maybe six of one, half a dozen the other. It'll really depend. And we've got the commander just still trying to, uh, well, stay clear of those asteroids. <laughs> Vader <laughs> just gunning it after him. Yeah. Which is good because with Vader's incredibly high pilot skill, currently 11, normally 9, veteran instincts bringing it up to 11, mm -hmm. that means they pretty much unless somebody also starts with pilot skill 9 and goes to 11 via music then nobody has it so much yeah no it's uh he's in a good spot and just he's continuing that trend of well chasing after the commander mm -hmm. he wants uh wants his blood <laughs> and there's his Anne, really seeing a phenomenal amount of use out of her this uh this game oh yeah i know when she first came out uh, her general reception was not terribly positive. She's fairly expensive, but with the Xan and the captain, or the, the commander here, it makes for a really durable ship. Well, I think when you look at a, a crewman like Izan, and you compared it to what else came out at near the same time, mm -hmm. you looked at C-3PO coming out, and at the time, how powerful of a, a defensive ability he was, mm -hmm. and you compare it to Izan, who... About the same points, and you know, it's very, very limited. You require it, she needs you to be damaged. And so, there we have Vader just three attack dice, three damage points in the uh, managing to roll. Craig rolled an evade on his defense there, mm -hmm, spent mm -hmm. his evade token, still takes a crit, but still has Palpatine up his sleeve <clears throat> for the return shots here. And that was the, uh... all right, so let's see, this should be, oh, this is the Academy into the front of the, uh, the Omnicron pilot there. Get some damage through, gets a crit through onto Palpatine. And that crit is a stunned pilot. <laughs> it's a stunned pilot. pilot, another one. All right. So... Now, do those things stack? I believe <laughs> they do. Yeah, they, uh, I think they might. It, that would be uh, terribly unfortunate if you got two stun pilots. Yeah. But. And so here is Vader uh, coming under fire, taking a, well, it takes a point off his shield there. But as we see, the commander just proving the astounding durability of that ship. Yeah. Vader trying to kill him. Oh, he's he's, he's, he's got to be almost dead by now, though. He's... Yeah, he's trying, but <laughs> man, he's not giving it up. Not at all. On top of that, the academy, pot, the academy and Wampa. Is... Yeah, we still got Craig. Still got both of his academies in play. A nice uh, maneuver here, barrel rolling into uh, a potential landing spot for Vader. Greg recognizes he wants to keep his decimator alive. Yeah. He does not want to let, uh... <clears throat> does not want to let Vader get to it. <laughs> but it looks like, uh... Alright, so there is the Omnicron, again, getting a flyby. That pilot's got to be irritated na by now, though, just with all these Academy pilots buzzing him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of those things that when you have your boss looking over your shoulder as you're flying around, you tend to focus on the task at hand mm -hmm. and not necessarily worry about all this other stuff that's in your way. This is the ultimate check ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when your boss can shoot lightning out of his fingertips. Yeah. However, it looks like... Uh... Looks like the commander has actually uh, received a damaged cockpit crit here. 
seeing as he moved first. He's already performed his action, so he's down to pilot skill zero. Not a, really not a good spot to mm -hmm. be in for a ship that kind of relies on its pilot ability for a chunk of its durability. Now, <clears throat> when it comes down to Garth Vader interacting with him, it's not going to make that much of a difference. No. And so let's see if Wampa... So not opting to do a K turn, just opting to do a nice hard, one hard turn flying parallel to the shuttle. Mm-hmm. Let's see, he's in a really, Wampa's in a pretty good spot to, well, to stay on the shuttle. See where he ends up. Poor shuttle. Yeah, Poor not... space cab. <laughs> not a, Yeah, and, and not it's just, good. It just shows you that when he comes to the air su uh, space superiority fighter, uh, that is the TIE fighter LN model, they just buzz you, and they buzz you <laughs> to death, and they just... Yeah, get all over you, and it's, it's very difficult, and that's why you obviously have escorts. And when your escorts piss off to go <laughs> kill something else, it's very frustrating for a lambda pilot. Yeah, and so Wampa, he is barrel rolling over. Looks like to give himself uh, as much maneuverability room in the later turns. Doesn't want to stay too close to the shuttle. Doesn't really. He also doesn't need to at least this turn. And we have to move the. We have to mark and move this fighter in order to let Vader move on with that bank. Unlike yeah. a lot of straight maneuvers, banks are very particular of where where it starts. It has to be in between those two dowels. Mm -hmm. If it's not, you can really land in a place that you weren't supposed to land. Yeah. So a good try by Craig's Academy to foul up Vader. Any other maneuver other than a three would have uh, definitely would have done it. But Vader is now in range one. Of the commander. Yeah. That that should be a dead decimator this turn. I'd hope so. I would be terribly surprised if it wasn't. It looks like well, we've got a focus and an evade token for his two actions. There's a Zan's ability going out. And you, you can bet that that... You can bet that Emperor Palpatine is going to be used oh, defensively. Three hits from, natively from Vader... Fourth, from the advanced targeting, there is no rolling there at all. <laughs> that is a... That's an explosion. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go directly to the graveyard. And with that, that actually brings the points, well, a lot closer to level. Yeah, that's for the, for the most part, Jason has been on the ropes here because he lost his, he lost his three wingmen, mm -hmm. and it's just been Vader and the shuttle. Now that... that the decimator is gone. He all he has to do is deal with a couple of Tie Fighters. Exactly. Now still has to be careful of Wampa. Wampa can kill him if he can kill him if he doesn't play smart. But this is definitely a lot more even match now. Yeah, and and the other thing with Wampa is Wampa is not no longer benefiting from that beautiful synergy mm -hmm. with Emperor Palpatine. He's not. But and in return. Jason's shuttle is it, it's also quite heavily damaged here. He has he still has to be careful with that. You know, it, it's an even game, but still right now almost lean towards Craig just given the damage situation on the shuttle. But I like this. It's a smart turn up into Wampa. Yeah. <laughs> try to make him bump or overshoot you. Yeah, and again, that shuttle has the ability to just stop if it wants to. Yeah. It's got a stress token, so that was a, a stressful maneuver. A good use of it, but... Mm -hmm. And it, as we see, Wampa running into the front of the shuttle. Well, t Yeah, and that, that's going to be very difficult if, for future turns because that shuttle can literally just keep on bumping until mm -hmm. that... It can do a one forward and, oh, and stay yeah. there if it needs to. <laughs> Shed that stress and not get shot at by Wampa, mm -hmm. and the whole all the while Vader gets to get turned around. So yep. You get to see that beautiful engine upgrade come into play with the boost maneuver that he's doing now. Yep, we may. And he only has one fighter pointing in his direction. He does, and that's going to be a close one if it's even an arc. And so we see the target lock coming out here. It looks like Vader has, oh, possibly declared his uh, his next victim. <laughs> you, you are next. 
Nice long range shots by uh, Craig's Academy here. Ooh, two. Oh, uh, both of them going through though. Whew. Not, uh, not good there. And that means that Vader is down to one, if I recall. No, that's the shuttle. That, the oh, shuttle um, yeah. is very heavily damaged. All right, and so we've got Craig's target locked academy turning towards Vader. His other academy will also be turning towards Vader. <clears throat> Trying to set up a a kill zone here. Let's... Head him off. But Vader's still remarkably healthy. Looks like he's only taken the one point of damage so far. You should be very careful, too. You can mm -hmm. set up a kill box. Vader can do one of two, th or one of a bunch of things, really, but one of two things in my mind. Either he can really just motor forward and try to deal with Wampa right away, especially since Wampa's in a very terrible spot, or he can start turning in and dealing with these fighters in probably what's going to be an epic dogfight. <laughs> exactly. Not in the TIE Fighter's favor, just because of how maneuverable Vader is. And on top of that, he has the pilot advantage to see where they're going to go, see where they're going to land, and then act accordingly. Mm -hmm. And so there we saw the shuttle, as we mentioned before, just doing a, well, what's in essence a zero maneuver, but it's actually a green one. Just, all right, I'm going to voluntarily bump you, I don't move. The Wampa blasting past the shuttle. Looks like he did not opt to K-turn him. <clears throat> really uh, gung-ho for Vader here. Wants to kill him. And so Vader getting a, a focus and actually barrel rolling here to get out of arc of one of the two academies and into range one. And it's into the arc of its prey. Exactly. Now this uh, academy he's shooting at, this is the target locked academy. Or this academy pilot is evaded. And let's see if we're going to spend... So, Jason will spend Palpatine offensively for potential hits. Doesn't really roll that well. Gets one. And he's already been damaged. He's already, so, the evade token, it doesn't matter if he spends it. That was the fighter that had, two had a point of damage on it already. And Vader confirming a kill for a, a very nice shot there. Yeah. And those all that went through were crits, which is mm -hmm. kind of disconcerting as well. And... Looks like, so Wampa getting his, actually natively rolling his crit will trigger his pilot ability to completely bypass Vader's defenses and put a point of damage onto his hull. Well, when it works, it works well. Oh, exactly. And we've got Craig's re now remaining academy fire, just continuing to pour fire into the back of the shuttle. And again, just... Not quite enough. Getting a focus result, it looks like. And both versions of Palpatine are now dead. So now it is two TIE fighters against the Dark Lord of the Sith himself, mm -hmm. Darth Vader. A, really? I imagine, fairly aggravated Dark Va Darth Vader. He's yeah. taken a hull. He's taken a shield. He's seen... Well, actually, I, I don't imagine he cares too much about watching his boss blow up, but... No, that probably made him happy. Yeah. He's but, seen his wingmen get cut down one by one. Let's see. Uh, let's see if he can, well, vent his wrath, or if he'll go down in uh, inglorious defeat. But um, it is really anyone's game here, though. Absolutely, and that, and that is just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloodbath, but it, it's definitely been exciting so far. And Wampa, in a somewhat uncharacteristic move of him just blasting forward now the tie fighter it does not have a 5k turn it just got a 5 forward so he is just screaming forward oh yeah try to either put space between himself and vader's landing spots or uh, block him up looks like attempted barrel roll here but i would seriously doubt he can complete that yeah, those things can really move absolutely We have a forearm in the way, but no, he is. He does not have enough room to land there. It was really tight, especially mm -hmm. with the other, with his own TIE fighter there. Yeah. Still trying to complete it, though. And it looks like... 
Craig manages to complete it in the one possible spot, <laughs> sandwiching himself between Vader and the Academy pilot. And Vader doing a three hard turn. Now, if he can't land this, he's going all the way back to the start. <laughs> if he can't land, he's, he's not moving, exactly. Well, he will move minutely to bump Wampa. Mm. But it looks like he can clear <laughs> it. Just it. clears it. Oh, that is awesome. And with no shots being taken, Vader, as an action, will acquire a lock onto, well, onto Wampa. And looks like for his final action, take a boost. All right, and then we go into planning. With most of the action being on uh, Jason's side of the board here. It's being the, being the gentleman and moving Craig's ships with his permission. It, it, I like it. It's a very sportsmanship, sportsmanlike thing to do. Yeah, it looks like... I think they're having a lot of fun just mm. because of just how quickly and, and, and enticely they're they're trying to figure this things out you can tell the time is of the essence just with Absolutely. how quickly they're putting things down you could tell the previous term that they were putting dials down as mm -hmm. the other players were were flying so we'll yep. see what what they can do how they can manage yep. and, and who will reign supreme in the final turns craig not wanting to uh not wanting to be cagey here he k turns both of his fighters Knowing, it, knowing that he'll be able to get himself turned around and with uh, with room to shed a stress, reaction, action back up, and that. So just getting himself moved up, chasing after Vader. Very, very tight, very concise maneuvers, mm -hmm. but at the same time, Time is of the essence. You can really see, yeah, that in, in every in their movements. And we've got Vader. It's coming in. Wampa, unsurprisingly, Wampa's in the background there. He doesn't want to be too close. And let's see if Vader is going to stay his range three, or if he's going to boost up. So checking a target lock range here. So. He <laughs> No, he's just going to uh, opt to shoot at the, the front academy pilot there. No damage taken. Return fire from the academy into Vader. One potential and simply spending an evade token. Don't even need to roll for that. <laughs> and again, Craig, move it just blasting forward, trying to uh, trying to gum up Vader here. See where he goes, and it actually looks like he is successful. He will block Vader with that, f with his aca uh, Craig's Academy there. But that may put Vader into range one of Wampa. So let's see. So here we have, throwing his attack dice. That is a range one shot into Wampa. Doesn't roll incredibly well. No, that is one potential. Now let's see if he, ac if Jason elects to spend his target lock. He is actually spending his target lock. Yeah. So, so, slightly better outcome. Gets a point of damage through, and that is actually a critical hit. But it's still not enough to, to put that TIE fighter into <laughs> the dirt. Not enough, no. Here we have the returning fire. Wampa firing back. Three attacks versus three defense. This could put Vader down if he rolls poorly, and this will determine... <laughs> The outcome of the game. Yeah, let's see. So, big, uh, <laughs> big moment here. All right, and? And the Dark Lord manages to evade. He does not die. And that is time for the game. And that result was actually 74 points for Jason to 65 points for Craig, which, at the time of the tournament, modified wins were still legal. That is a modified win for Jason. Wow. <laughs> that was a 
fight right up to the end. Yeah, a very fitting end to a really a really close game, really even both uh, for most of it there. Jason, he definitely had a disadvantage while the Decimator was alive. As soon as he died, though, he manages to pull it back. Yeah, and I, I really like the fact that it was almost a mirror match. These two players fought their way to the top tables. They got all the way there. Very similar style lists in a, in a, in a theme sense. They mm -hmm. both had Palpatine modifying a swarm of sorts. Mm -hmm. One had Vader, one didn't. And well, the one that didn't had Wampa, and Wampa was a key player the entire game. And that just shows you that how powerful the dark side is <laughs> when it comes to playing as Imperials. Absolutely. Well, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this game as much as we did. As always, uh, thanks for watching Wookiees on X-Wing. Be sure to like and subscribe. We've got Wookiees videos out every Wednesday. We are part of the Northern Gaming Network. Be sure to check it out at northerngamingnetwork.com where we have additional content for this game and others. And... Uh, you can always get a hold of us through the comment section of the videos. Uh, John will let you know how you can get a hold of us directly, though. Well, you can find me at Corehath. You can also find us on Twitter at NorthGameNet. Or you can like us on Facebook to keep up with our most recent news. And we'll see you guys next week.